unsurprisingly, one of the first skills to learn while studying chemistry is to name compounds using the periodic table. So how do we do this? Very easy indeed, for a starting point anyway. This is what you do. Let's use a word equation to show this. And of course, this means we don't write formulae. We use the names of the elements involved. So we will write in words what happens when the metallic element, sodium, chemically reacts with chlorine gas. This is a chemical reaction, but we show what happens by using the names of the elements involved in the chemical reaction and write what is made. So sodium metal plus chlorine gas react to produce sodium chloride. The plus sign means sodium and chlorine are mixed and are reacting. The arrow is saying that the sodium and chlorine are reacting and producing sodium chloride. Because sodium chloride is produced, we call the sodium chloride a product. And because sodium and chlorine are reacting, we call them reactants. Sodium plus chlorine produces sodium chloride. So what about the naming of the compound sodium chloride that is produced? Here's how it works. The element that is further to the left on the periodic table is written first. The element further to the right in the periodic table is written second. Well, that's quite easy. But the second named element's ending changes. Take away the end part of the chlorine, that's I-N-E, and replace it with I-D-E. So this is known as the ID rule. This works for many of the compounds that are made at this level. So let's try these. We will write a word equation and then write the name of the product. So we have magnesium reacting with fluorine, lithium reacting with carbon, calcium reacting with sulfur, beryllium reacting with bromine, and potassium reacting with nitrogen. In the first one, magnesium plus fluorine. It means magnesium and fluorine are reacting to produce magnesium fluoride. Remember the second named element's ending changes to IDE or AID. Lithium reacts with carbon and produces lithium carbide. Calcium reacts with sulfur and produces calcium sulfide. Beryllium reacting with bromine makes beryllium bromide. And lastly, potassium plus nitrogen makes the product potassium nitride. In each of these cases, you are changing the ending of the second named element to IDE because the second named element appears further to the right on the periodic table. The ending of the name gives information on the number of elements in a compound. So if it ends in IDE, there are only two elements present. But what if there are more than two elements present plus oxygen? The product's name then changes to ATE or ITE. And at this stage, don't pay too much attention to the difference between ITE and ATE. The only difference is that ATE named compounds have more oxygens than ITE compounds. And that's all. So this is called the ITE and ATE rule. It simply means there are two or more elements present plus oxygen. Look at the examples here. Sodium plus sulfur makes sodium sulfide. Only two elements present. But next, if sodium and sulfur and oxygen have reacted, you end up with sodium sulfate, showing that sodium, sulfur and oxygen are present. The rest of these examples work in exactly the same way. So have a look at them. Just pointing out again that the only difference between ITE and ATE compounds is the number of oxygen atoms. To show this, here are the formulae for sodium sulfate and sodium sulfite and note the difference in the number of oxygens in each of these formulae. Now for practice you can try these. The answers to these will soon be available in a downloadable PDF from www.thestudentcafe.com. All for now.